What's up, Battletech fans? We're back in the painter's pit one more time with Morgan Kells Archer this go-round, since you voted for it. For the purposes of this miniature, I used the Mech's Alpha Strike card as a reference, so if it looks a little different than what you might have imagined, that's where I took my inspiration from. As usual, all the materials you'll need are in the video description, so feel free to follow along with the tutorial and check that list out later. Alright, let's get started. I started off with one of my old standbys, Wraith Bone Spray, as the base, since I'm going to be using mainly contrast paints and washes to achieve the effects I want, so the warmth of the undercoat is important. Just give this a good even coat and make sure you cover the undersides of the miniature as well. Give it approximately an hour to dry, and then you can move on to the next step. So I'm going to cover the primary colors before going back to the turntable again, and I'm going to start out using Basilicanum Gray. This contrast paint is almost like a thicker version of Nuln Oil, but because the two are so similar, we're going to use the two in conjunction with one another. There's no need to thin this down, just get the waist and hips down to the knees at first. I like to start out with the darkest stuff first, because if I get any on the white areas of the miniature where I don't want it, I can easily wick it away or cover it up with some brush on wraith bone before moving on. When I get both of the legs covered, I'll go for the upper arm areas and work slow, being careful to avoid spilling any of the paint into the areas I'd rather remain white for now. Maybe you can't tell, but my hands were really shaking for this one so I worked really slow, and that can benefit you as well. Give this a good 25 or 30 minutes to dry. If you go too fast, the contrast paint could rub off during the next step if it hasn't fully cured. Once the Basilicanum is dry, give the same areas a coating of Nuln Oil at full strength. Longtime watchers of the channel know I like to layer up three coats of Nuln Oil to achieve a look like this, but this combo is the closest thing I've found to getting the same result. Just work slow and give it one go before giving it about 25 or 30 minutes to dry. Bastion Grey from Privateer Press is one of my favorite go-to colors to lightly dry brush over areas that are supposed to be black. I just add a little amount to a small dry brush and wipe most of it off on a napkin or paper towel and test it on my fingernail to make sure only a light dusting of paint comes off with each pass of the brush. I'm using an Army Painter dry brush that's angular which will allow me to control my spreading of the color to just the spots where I really want it and avoid getting it anywhere I don't. Just use gentle, quick passes with the brush to smooth out the black areas and give them the illusion of a gunmetal coating. For the red areas, I've used Blood Angel's Red as the base color. Use this contrast paint at full strength and try to avoid excessive pooling, if possible. Just pay attention for the dark pools of liquid that form and either wick them away with your brush or spread them around further, whichever you prefer. You're going to put a wash over this in the next step, so there'll be plenty of opportunity for you to throw some shade. Go for even, non-streaky coverage here. You're looking at probably a good 30 to 45 minutes of dry time, and it's for the same reasons as the first step. The wash will cause the contrast paint to rub off if it hasn't cured fully at the time of application, so give it time. Once you've applied the Blood Angel Red and it's fully cured, hit it with a coating of Karober Crimson at full strength. 
Now you're looking for a bit of pooling to add shadow, so just let gravity work on the miniature as you add a moderate amount of wash to the red areas. It will pull the liquid down into the places where shadows would naturally occur, and it'll go a long way to giving the miniature some depth in the next step. The final step before moving on to the metallic areas of the miniature is to dry brush these two colors on back to back. Start using Evil Sun Scarlet and dry brush as many of the red bits on the miniature as you can. I use a bit larger of a flat dry brush for this because I really want the color to be evident. Go gentle though, no need to press down hard during this step. Just try to get as much as you can before moving on. Once you feel like you're ready to move on, don't even wash your brush in between. Just grab Wild Rider Red and go through the usual steps to begin dry brushing with that color. Go really light on the pressure while you're applying this, because Wild Rider is more like an orange than a true red, so you're only wanting the color to add a bit of highlight to give the illusion of depth. The panels will look sunk in, and the raised areas of the miniature will stand out far more once you're finished. So go until you feel like you're done, but remember, you can always add more, you can't take it away. So when in doubt, go easy. Lead Belcher and Nuln Oil is my go-to combo for gunmetal. As I always say, pick out the areas of the miniature you want to be metallic before you start. That way you go into it with a plan in place. There's no right or wrong way per se, just whatever makes you happy. In this instance, I'll do the fists, LRM bays, and some vents before I call it good. I'll get the antennas too. I feel like with Morgan Kell at this point, less is more. Give the lead belcher just a little bit of time to dry and then apply your Nuln Oil to the metallic areas at full strength. A little goes a long, long way, so go easy and layer up if you feel like you need to. I always say this is just like inking a comic book, so take your time. If you like, you can do like I have here and give the hands or the missile bays a light dry brushing with Runefang Steel. It's by no means necessary though, so you choose what idea you like the most and go with that. I won't worry about too much besides the hands and the missile bays before I move on though. And that's it, you're done. You can do the cockpit and base however you like, but I used the same technique for the cockpit as previously detailed in the Aiden Pride video, with flash gets yellow and E end and yellow contrast. The base is a combination of Agrellan Earth, Snakebite Leather, and Sylvaneth Bark. As always, I've painted the hex sides with a couple different colors so that all players know at a glance which hex side is the front facing of the miniature. Thank you all for voting in the poll, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Do us a big favor if you haven't already, and give this video a like and give the channel a subscription, if you'd be so kind. Battlebound has a Patreon where you can help support the creation of more content just like this for fans just like yourself. Check it out and sign up today to enjoy those benefits tomorrow. Thanks again for watching, I'm Tuck Davian, and I'll see you next time right here out on the Space Lane. Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.